Transitions between the songs in your worship set list are really important, and the keys position is one of the most important parts of the band that can go a long way towards making sure those transitions are smooth. In this video, I'm gonna give you three simple ways to approach transitions between two songs in vastly different keys, and we're gonna keep it simple, so you don't need to memorize a bunch of complex chord shapes, and you don't need to internalize a ton of music theory knowledge to do this. We're gonna make this approachable to even intermediate or beginning level worship keys players. Let's dive into how to nail the most difficult song transitions from the keyboard. Now handling transitions between songs in a set list is a topic we've talked about a little bit here at Sunday Sounds before, but today we're gonna to dive into the more challenging transitions between two songs. Songs that might not have a lot of chords or even notes in the scale in common. I'm gonna teach you simple techniques and ways to think about these transitions that will apply to any number of scenarios, any number of songs and set lists. But before we dive into them, I wanna sort of present an option zero here. And this is not a cop out. If a specific moment of your set list has a transition that you feel it's really important to nail seamlessly, but the two songs are in very different keys. So maybe you're going from C to D flat or C to G flat, as far away from each other on the circle of fifths as you can get with very few notes in common. If that transition is really, really important for some moment, maybe you're trying to create a very specific atmosphere and you don't want to disrupt it, I would propose that sometimes it's worth just changing the key of one of those two songs to make that transition smoother. So maybe you go from C to G instead of C to G flat, or even from C to D instead of C to D flat, because that transition could be a little bit smoother as well. Or just drop that D flat song down to the key of C and perform both songs in the key of C. So that's option zero to me is, can you smooth out the transition by being flexible about the key of either song? For the rest of this tutorial, let's assume that for whatever reason, maybe because of the vocal range of your singer or for other reasons, maybe you just feel like you want there to be a moment of transition. Let's talk about how you can handle these more difficult transitions and keep things sounding smooth. So here's option one. All right, so I've got a couple sounds pulled up here within the Sunday Keys template. I'm using the balanced grand and then the worship pad sound. Now for this tutorial or for these options that I'm gonna to present to you, it's really helpful to have some sort of instrument with sustain. The most common in worship music would be a pad like this one because then you can just hold out things over time. And specifically for this first technique, that's gonna be really important. The first option is to just find a common note or two between the two keys that you're transitioning between and then find a way to just let those notes sort of ring out over time. So as an example, we're gonna look at the circle of fifths and let's go from the key of C over clockwise to the key of A. So in the key of C, we've got those notes right there in the key of A. So these are the notes common between the two scales. We've got A, B, D, E, and A. So this isn't that bad because we've got a lot of common notes. We don't have many common chord shapes. Actually, we don't have any common chord shapes between the two, which is what makes this transition a little bit intimidating because your natural instinct, especially if, with more complementary key changes, would be to hold a chord and then shift to the new key, but we can't do that here. So instead, we are going to Focus on these notes, A, B, D, E, A. At the end of our first song, try to let these sort of hover for a little while and then transition to the new key. So I'm gonna bring up this pad sound. We're just gonna end our hypothetical song in C. So there we've ended on that. And then what I'm gonna do is just let this pad sort of hang out, mostly in the right hand here, because this is a little bit more subtle. You can even bring this piano out if you just wanted to let this transition happen a little bit more over time. You can fade that piano back in. Mm -hmm. 
and then gently enter into that new key of A. Now with this first technique, you might think, you know, that's really not much of a technique at all. You're just waiting, holding a couple notes and starting the new song. But there's something really important here for you to learn. The congregation, your listener, wants to believe. They want to go where you're taking them. They want all to be well. So if you start telling them, hey, we're in this new key, we're going to this new place, very quickly, your audience, your congregation, the listeners will go with you. So the most important ingredient to make this first technique work is time. Let a little bit of time pass from the ending of the first song before you dive right into the second one. If I do this transition really quickly, then it's a big transition that people are gonna be hyper aware of. But if I let time pass, and then just let that moment fade. If I'm comfortable with making the congregation wait a moment, and then I tell them musically, okay, here we go. So let's take this now further around the circle of fifths. So let's go from C to B. So here we have, and then the scale for B. So the only two common notes are E and B. So this is a little bit more challenging. As you go further around the circle, you're gonna have fewer and fewer notes to work with. But this isn't actually that bad of a transition for us because we can end on that major seven one chord and just let that hang out. So. So people might actually think for a moment that you're going to E here because you're holding E and B, so the one and five of an E chord. But then you can just tell people, nope, we're going to B. So you are on the four here, essentially, with that E and B. And then you just fade in that one chord, and that's going to feel really good, really authoritative. Another important ingredient in making this technique work is confidence and clarity. So as you're hanging out here, when we're going from C to B, right now we're sort of spoofing an E chord, right? There's no third in it. This is really the four chord of our new key if we're going from C to B. So it's really important that once we actually move into this new song, that we give people the one so they know that's where we're ending up. This is home now as we're going into this next song. So the two big ingredients of this first technique are time, being comfortable letting things hang for a while, have a sound or two in your keys patch that can do that for you. And then after the passage of time, make sure you actually let people know where the new home base is by sort of authoritatively or declaratively hitting the one. All right, so technique number two is a little bit simpler and it's sort of plays into what I already spoke about where the congregation wants to trust you with where you're going. I think it's really important for us as worship leaders, as worship keys players, to understand that not every transition needs to be seamless. There's something really powerful musically about saying we're here. We end this song in a nice high note, lots of power in C, and then we go to Flat. There's no transition there other than the fact that we just started playing in the new key. 
Now that transition is not too bad because we're going a whole step down, which generally works. It'd be even easier if we were going one step on the circle of fifths, like from C to F. This sort of declarative, we're just going to go there technique works even with less in common between the two keys, depending on the moment that you're trying to create. So the whole point of this second technique is at times the transition being noticeable is actually the right choice to make when you're planning out your transition. So we're going to go from C to A flat where there's not actually a lot in common between these two keys but we're just gonna act like the transition is supposed to be happening. We're gonna do it with intention, with a little bit of forcefulness. We're gonna tell the story like, hey everybody, we're gonna go to this new key. We're gonna sing a new song about something a little bit different than what we were just singing about. So there's still an element of time here. I'm gonna let this hang for just a second. And then I'm going to go straight to the one. And I guarantee you that if you do this with intentionality, if you do this with a little bit of confidence, your congregation is just going to trust you. They're going to go right there with you. This works even with half step changes. So we're going to go to D flat. step. You have to be careful with those really close intervals because you've got very few notes in common, no chords in common, and if you do it wrong it can sound like uh, like a Broadway key change or like a Disney movie key change. We don't want that vibe at all, but if you just let some time pass and then then that transition is gonna happen without any question from your congregation because they trust you when you act like you know where you're going. All right, our third and final technique for handling complex key transitions from song to song is one that relies on this sort of desire that the congregation has to identify home base and then just cling to that with all the energy that they have. And that's always gonna be the major one chord for us almost all of the time as worship musicians. So if we're in the key of C, we can play any other chord. But when we hit that one, when we hit the major one chord for us in C, that's the, the C chord. When we hit that, the, the congregation is gonna love it. It's gonna feel nice and resolved and home. So when we make a transition from one key to another, regardless of the relationship between those two keys, the most important thing we need to do for our listener is establish where the new home base is. And that's what this third technique relies upon. So we're going to go from the key of C to the key of E. So we've got a few common notes there and we could use technique one to just sort of let those notes sort of hint at the new key and then go straight to it. But we're not going to do that here. Instead, we're going to make a statement that says, this is the new home base. And to do that, we're going to play the four or the five chord of the new key and then immediately resolve it to the one chord of the new key because there's this sort of gravity to these transitions, these relationships between these chords. So if we look at E on the circle of fifths, just clockwise from there, we have the five chord B and counterclockwise, we have the four chord A. 
So we could hit either of those chords and then let gravity swing us to the one chord, E. And that's gonna feel like a strong statement, a very natural resolution as we start this new song to the listener. So we're gonna be in C again. So we're gonna land on the one. This works even if you're landing on the four. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is we're going to go to the four or the five. This is a judgment call. And then we're gonna paint a picture of here's the new home base. So in order to do this, you could come up with your own little chord progression or motif to specifically address this moment of transition. Or if that progression is already present in the new song you're playing, then that's a great part of the song to start on, even if you just use it without any words, without any melody to hint at the new key and tell people where that home base is. So let's do this with one more key. Let's go from C to E flat. So we can look to the left or right of E flat on the circle of fifths to find our four chord to the left and our five chord to the right. So we could go to an A flat or we could go to a B flat. So for me, let's go ahead and play that B flat. So we're starting in C again. off to the one in C. Now we're gonna play this nice B flat. People might think we're in B flat right here. And that's not a bad thing because it's only two steps away from C. And then we're just gonna go to that E flat. with the way that I flourish here in the right hand by adding in the two to the three to the two, seven to the one, I'm able to even more concretely paint a picture of this new key as home base. So then when I go back to that B flat, it feels like the five instead of the one. You go to the A flat four here and we're just rounding out the chords that are in this key. Could throw in that four there, back to the three. Playing that one sus and then resolving to the one is a really strong way to say, hey, you know what, this is home base now. And again, if you do this with confidence, if you do this as a unit or in isolation, maybe if you're just the keys player and the rest of the band hangs back or doesn't play for this transition, your congregation is going to have no idea where you just were musically because they are going to fully believe in the transition, in the new key, as soon as you tell them to believe in it. So we just ended on a, let's go ahead and go to B flat now. We're gonna do this by hitting an F chord first. And then I'm gonna hit a G minor because that's gonna let people know, okay, B flat's home base and the F is actually the five chord. So 
So those are three options for how you can handle transitions between two songs regardless of the key. All of these transitions, all of these techniques really rely on you just being confident and making a choice about how you're gonna tell your congregation where you're going. You could rely on the passage of time, you could rely on a few common notes, or you could just make a declarative statement and ask the congregation to go somewhere new with you. Now, if you have questions or comments on how to handle transitions, maybe between specific keys, leave a comment on this video. We'd be glad to chime in with our input there. If you want the sounds that I've been using for this tutorial, we'll include a link in the description to our Sunday Keys template, which is available for main stage and Ableton Live. It comes with all of the go-to worship key sounds you need for any song or set list. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up and let us know, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one.